Hello, my name is Dr. John Andreofsky. I'm a consultant anaesthetist working at the Royal Hampshire Hospital in Sheffield, which is a large teaching hospital in the north of the UK. So I want to talk to you about pre-warming. I'm passionate about avoiding inadvertent perioperative hypothermia. And in my trust, we have changed our team brief document right at the beginning of the uh, perioperative journey so that all staff are aware that pre-warming is to be used during the patient pathway. So before the patient even arrives in the anaesthetic area, the forced air warming device should be turned on to the maximum settings available. Ideally, we should use a device that warms the air within about 30 seconds. Some devices actually blow room air for the first few minutes, and until they're fully warmed, they act as a fan, and they may even make the patient feel colder. So as soon as the patient comes into your operating area or your anaesthetic room and they are supine, then we cover them with a forced air warming blanket. And this can be done whilst introducing yourselves and whilst doing all the patient checks. So warming thus takes place during the WHO signing. And in this way, pre-warming time can be maximized. And it's been demonstrated really clearly that even short periods of pre-warming, around 10 minutes or more, can have a really good positive impact on patients' intraoperative temperature and of course avoidance of inadvertent perioperative hypothermia. And it achieves this by limiting the immediate post-induction vasodilatation that occurs after administering a GA. And of course that vasodilatation also occurs during insertion of regional blocks such as spinals, so it's worth pre-warming these patients too. And by pre-warming them in this way, the initial steep drop in temperature from core to periphery heat distribution is minimised. And it's incredible how many patients comment at this stage how enjoyable it is and how pleasant it is to have a nice warm blanket applied. And they often appear less anxious. If hospital blankets are taken out of the warming oven, however, these material ones, and they're used at this stage, the sensation is similar and the patient says, oh, that feels warm but within two or three minutes, those blankets are at room temperature again, and then they act merely as insulation. They've lost their pre-warming effect. An active pre-warming device is the only way to achieve efficient pre-warming of your patients. So as well as making the patient feel more comfortable and allaying some of their anxieties, pre-warming can have a discernible impact on the instance of hypothermia in the perioperative period. And of course, avoiding hypothermia has been shown to decrease wound infections, minimise blood loss, and of course decrease post-operative shivering, which can be really very unpleasant for the patients. So it's really important that pre-warming continues whilst we are applying all the monitoring and inserting any additional lines such as arterial lines or central lines. And then of course, once all these lines are in and the monitoring is fully applied, we can go ahead and anaesthetise our patient. But all that time, pre-warming was ongoing. On transfer to the operating room and during prepping by the surgical team, it's of course best if warming is continued. Now some surgeons prefer it if the blanket is not blowing during the actual painting with the preparation fluid. And if this time without a forced air warmer being applied can be minimised, it's obviously best for the patient. The surgical team has a duty in preventing hypothermia too, so they should cooperate in minimising any exposure time to the cold operating room environment.